The anthrax outbreak in the Pavladar region has spread beyond the quarantined villages. On Monday, a 32-year-old resident of the city has joined the list of new victims. Doctors say the patient himself appealed for medical attention. There are currently five people infected with anthrax in the hospital and one contact patient has been already discharged. Doctors will be examining how the recently hospitalized man was infected. According to them, the patient could not specify what kind of meat he has consumed. Meanwhile, the sanitary and epidemiology agency representatives refrained from commenting the situation. However, it was revealed that the test's results made on the horse meat due to which a city market was shut down came out positive. The meat was indeed bacteria infected. Doctors say the patient came to hospital right on time. This condition is moderate. We cannot give 100% guarantees, but there is hope for a positive outcome because he has been under the medical care for three days already, and in general, the illness is passing well. Officials from the Telecommunications Ministry are ignoring the problem of Kazakh citizens who cannot gain the access to, in to selected Internet resources for already two years. The position web resources and blogs are being blocked unless users use anonymous proxy service. Roshani Sergepova, a spouse of a famous journalist, demands through her lawyer Sergei Utkin to force the ministry to hold internal inspection in order to solve the problem. The second court hearing over the petition of Raushan Yisirgepova against the Communication and Information Ministry was held in the Medeo District Court of Almaty. During the last hearing, the court has listened to the opinions of both sides but made no decisions. This time was no different and the final hearing was postponed yet again. It is unknown whether the blocking will be eliminated, but if the ministry will start doing something, it will be great. This means that there will be a chance that inquiries will be answered, although don't expect anything substantial. They could, for instance, say that the website's owners block them on their own. This will indeed show whether the ministry really wants to do something about the matter or not. The first hearing over the Yesergepov's case was postponed indefinitely upon the defendant's request, more precisely until the ministry's state resignation. It is clear that the inquiry is just a way to protract the process. During the hearing, it seemed that the defendant was kept to settle, but promised to provide a final answer after the consultation with the management. I have to coordinate everything and obtain the permission from the leadership. There is no hope for the fairness of our courts. Together with Internet users, we cannot win. Thus, the settlement is seen as a good start. The sites will return to the trial only in July after the state holidays. If male state servants cannot cope with official responsibilities, their place can be taken by women, of whom there is an apparent shortage in the authorities, say the participants of a gender equality roundtable held at the Kazakh National University on Tuesday. Women must occupy about 30 percent of seats in the Kazakh parliament by 2016. This norm was set in the nation's gender equality strategy. Representatives of the Gender Equality Center have called upon male leaders to remise women the right to take care of the nation's health care and education issues. The reserve of women's human resources was created and we are hoping women will take some leading positions in the upcoming elections. In the meantime, the majority is still made up by men. There are only 17 percent of women in the parliament's both chambers and just 14 in various local councils of the country. Four women work as first assistants to administrators and only three as area heads. In 10 of the functioning parties, the men and women ratio varies between 30 and 56 percent on average. Those women who are left out of the state bodies or political organizations boards struggle for their rights independently. We, as citizens of Kazakhstan, have all the rights to freely move around the country. Leave people alone. We're ready to take on all the administrative work. We are against GCK and we whistled in protest. Women make up the base of all protesting movements and non-governmental organizations of Kazakhstan, says Yisinbek Uktishbaev, the chairman of the Housing for People movement. This is because of difficult fate of the women, he explains. These are mostly housewives and unemployed women. Their men seek employment in construction industry. They need to live somehow and they join as something needs to be done. Women are already happy for being women, says Baghdad Tatijanova, but when women find strength to compete in the men's world, it is not clear why they have to fight through men-created obstacles. 
The Russian diaspora, which represents a significant part of Kazakhstan's population, is not very happy about the new regulations on the compatriots program. Amendments made to the legislation dealing with Russian compatriots living outside Russia were presented recently in Almaty. The document is now reviewed by the Russian Duma, while its draft has already raised a lot of concerns both amongst Russian and Kazakhstan's citizens. The Russian Foreign Affairs Ministry has restricted the criteria list for applying for the compatriots program. Now the residency permit is issued only to Russian citizens living abroad and those who, quote, made a free choice in favor of spiritual and cultural links with Russia. The previous system of issuing compatriot status was much simpler and the current changes cancel many of the privileges. The Russian compatriots ID issued by the diplomatic missions of Russia with the help of Russian compatriots communities abroad, which well know all the community members and thus facilitate the citizenship acquiring process. This could help us to eliminate the disunity. The new amendments also specify the voluntary creation of Regional Council of Russian compatriots which will facilitate in resolving resettlement issues. However, according to the roundtable participants, something needs to be done soon in order to make the Russian diaspora members feel comfortable in the countries where they reside rather than force them to mass relocations. Outside of major cities like Almaty or Astana, people immediately encounter issues with documents or officials and they do not know who should deal with these problems. According to experts, the new amendments to the Compatriots Act and the creation of regional councils may hardly unite the large number of Russian diaspora members of Kazakhstan. More effective solutions are required. The new sports complex of the First President's Foundation will be commissioned in Almaty until the end of this year. In the past, the base center belonged to the Central Army Sports Club, which had no finances to pay for the facility's renovation. Find out more for the next story. The $10 million facility will include a stadium, two swimming pools and several soccer fields. The subcontractors say this is not a burden for the state budget because unidentified sponsors made in-kind contributions. The construction fully corresponds to the Sports Federation's requirements, although it is more oriented towards city residents and their children. Up until 2008, the base stadium was run by the Central Army Sports Club, which didn't renovate the facility for almost 40 years and then transferred it to the new owner. Some of the sportsmen had to be re-enrolled at various sports schools, while some stopped training altogether. Major General Pavel Novikov led the club for 22 years, but today he says things have drastically changed and sports became business. All of the sports facilities are self-sufficient now and everything should be paid for. The price is affected by all kinds of taxes as well. There is no doubt that the sponsors will see the return of investment. However, the emphasis is made on the social importance of this project. Also, the old club members will continue to use the new facility as before. We have been asked what happened to the old coaches and can tell you that all of them will be working in the new facility. So far no one speaks about the cooperation terms and the cost of the membership in the new swimming pool. In any case, the Army Club representatives are glad that the construction of the facility is going to end soon. There were attempts to downsize the number of the club's sports schools in Almaty and transfer some to Astana while using the free territory for elite estate projects. This were all the latest news from Kazakhstan. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.